Hello and welcome to episode 7 of Flags and Foods. I am Mr. Flag and I am excited to take you through a journey of flags and foods. A new day, a new place, a new taste. Let's say hello to Mr. and Mrs. Food. Marhaba. Marhab ten. Marhaba. Most people know that Marhaba is a greeting in Arabic. But there are 22 countries where Arabic is the official language. Let's see which of them is a country for today. The three quirky clues. Clue number one. A lot of famous movies have been shot in this country of which the three most iconic ones are Lawrence of Arabia, Rogue One Star Wars and Indiana Jones Last Crusade. Clue number two. In a region known for oil, ironically this country has hardly any oil. Clue number three. The country has a river by the same name which is considered holy by Christians because Lord Jesus Christ was baptized in this river. The country is Jordan. I visited Jordan in 2005. Jordan is located in the Levant region of Middle East. It is a major tourist destination boasting unique natural wonders, untouched desert landscapes and impressive archaeological sites. Jordan top 5 attractions 1. Petra Known as the Rose City and one of the new 7 wonders of the world, Petra is Jordan's leading tourist attraction. Hidden in a secluded valley surrounded by rugged mountains, Petra was once the capital of the Nabataean Kingdom. To reach Petra, you walk through a narrow 1.2 km gorge known as a Sikh. The rocks give way to reveal the incredible facade of Al Qasni or the treasury. Other significant ruins of Petra include the Roman theatre, the monastery and the street of facades. 2. Dead Sea The lowest point on the Earth's surface, the Dead Sea, is a fascinating natural phenomenon. Straddling the border between Israel and Jordan, the Dead Sea is six times as salty as a normal ocean. This incredibly high salt content means that nothing can grow or live in it and is so called the Dead Sea. The salt content also makes the Dead Sea extremely buoyant making it impossible to sink or swim in it. The only option is to float. In fact, one of the main photo movements on Dead Sea is to read a book while floating on the Dead Sea of course without getting the book wet. Many believe that these salts have curative powers and therapeutic qualities. 3. Wadi Ram Ancient riverbeds, vast pastel colored stretches of sandy desert and amazing rock formation known as Jebels from the incredible landscape of Wadi Ram. The distinctive reddish orange colors that lend the area an otherworldly quality has brought several science fiction films here including The Martian to replicate the red planet. 4. Jerash When many people think about Roman ruins, they picture destinations in Europe. However, one of the best preserved ones is in Jordan in Jerash. Some of the main landmarks of Jerash include Hadrian's Arch, the Hippodrome, the Temple of Artemis and the vast Oval Forum. 5. Aqaba Situated on the tip of the Red Sea, the laid-back resort of Aqaba is Jordan's only gateway to the sea. Renowned for its pristine sandy beaches, clear waters and colourful reefs studded with marine life, Aqaba is a great spot for diving, snorkeling and swimming. Today, we are going to prepare a dish which is synonymous with Jordan. A traditional Bedouin dish, mansaf. Jordanians take their mansaf quite seriously and it is seen as an utmost symbol of respect and hospitality if your host serves the guest mansaf on the table. And, hey, why are you pouring? Well, you didn't indicate that you finished. Well, in traditional Arabic customs, you need to jiggle your glass from side to side to show that you have finished your beverage. Okay. <laughs> Why do you think I am dressed up like this today to live the traditional Jordanian way of life? To prepare the mansaf, we are using 2 kg lamb meat chunks with the bone in, 2 onion 
diced into medium sized pieces 10 green cardamom 2 bay leaves 1 cup of liquid jameed jameed is a fermented dairy product it is a salted and thickened yogurt made from goat's milk half teaspoon turmeric powder 1 teaspoon ground black pepper 2 teaspoon ghee salt to taste 3 cups of short grain rice 1 cup slivered almonds parsley leaves to garnish markuk or shrak bread which is basically any uh, arabic flat bread to prepare the lamb stock put all the meat pieces in a pot and pour in cold water until it covers the meat once the water starts boiling, the meat will begin to release impurities. Reduce the heat and skim out this frothy layer of impurities to obtain a clear broth. This process takes about 20 minutes. Now drop in all the stock ingredients, cover and let cook for 1.5 to 2 hours till the meat is almost coming off the bone. Throughout this process, ensure that there is enough water to cover the meat. Once done, pick out the lamb chunks and keep aside. Strain the broth to use later in the sauce. To make the jameed sauce, in the same pot, pour back only the required amount of clear broth and stir into it the liquid jameed, turmeric powder and pepper. The jameed is salty in taste so no extra salt will be required cook on low heat for 15 minutes until the sauce is thickened add the lamb chunks and cook for another 25 to 30 minutes till the meat is tender and absorbs the flavors of the sauce cook the rice with ghee salt and turmeric powder and keep aside lightly toast the slivered almonds. To assemble the mansaf, spread out the bread as the base in a large platter and add a few spoons of the jameed sauce to moisten the bread. Serve the rice evenly over the bread and pour some more of the sauce. Place the lamb chunks on the rice and again pour jameed sauce over the meat. Garnish with parsley leaves and toasted almonds. It is customary to serve mansaf along with a side of extra jameed sauce. Hello Junior Food! Hello Mr. Flag! Ready to taste the mansaf? As always. Okay, here goes the two questions. Question number one. Who is the king and queen of Jordan? The king is King Abdullah the second and the queen is Rania. Very good Junior Food. Question number two. Which is the national flower of Jordan? I don't know. Make a guess. Is it the cactus? Why? Because there is desert in Jordan? Yeah. No, it's not the cactus. It's actually the black iris. It is one of the few flowers which is black in color. Now let's taste the food. But where is it? I can't see it on the table. Oh, that's right. Mr. and Mrs. Food. Hello. 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 Wow. Today's meal. Wow! So you've come to eat with us. Yes, yes. <laughs> of course. Yes, of course, because it's a community meal. Traditionally, mansaf is, is had in a community. You have to eat it with hands and from the plate directly. But here we are using our own plates. So that's all it again. Wow, 
what a meal it was anyway let's ask junior foods verdict of the meal three hand gestures okay yes junior food verdict Wow! Thank you, Jenny, for the amazing. So, what I enjoyed about the mansaf was mostly the meat, cause it was tender, and I really liked it so much. I totally agree, Junior. For the meat was so amazing. A lot of you viewers may be thinking that the mansaf is very similar to a biryani or a mandi. I agree, the base is rice and it's got meat in it, but. Jamid makes the whole dish very distinct because it adds a completely new flavor to the dish and the best indicator of a hearty and good mansaf is you feel sleepy just a week or so before my visit to jordan there's a terrible news which came out of the country there was a dastardly bomb attack in amman in three of its plush affluent hotels and when this news came it actually shook me to the core because i was new to traveling back then and jordan was maybe the second or third country i was traveling to you should understand that during those times jordan was an offbeat destination because petra had not yet been crowned as one of the seven wonders of the world which happened in 2007 so it was a bit of a fairy tale destination So when this particular incident happened I did get a bit of pressure from my family and friends to not take the trip but then I thought you know there are so many incidents like this which may happen in the world and we shouldn't cow down as tourists we need to go and visit the country and help its economy and show solidarity with the people I undertook the trip with a lot of disturbance in my mind but to my pleasant surprise I was in for a very enjoyable time in Jordan the core reason for that was because of the Jordanian hospitality right from the moment when i landed in the airport there were people who came to receive me even before the passport control which is quite unheard of and my driver and guide mr khalid was exemplarily hospitable he actually went out of his way to take me to every destination which was not even part of the itinerary i just want to take this moment to give an advice to all travelers out there Just don't be perturbed or disturbed by events which happen in a country and don't let these type of events negatively impact on your decision to undertake the trip. Shukran viewers for tuning into this episode of Flags and Foods. If you liked our show, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon. We will be back next week with another signature dish from another stunning country. Happy cooking. and keep your travel dreams alive